I'm hoping you can look at that numerator and tell me what it's equivalent to. Say it again, Dane. Sine squared x. All right, I'm hoping we're to that place, right? Because of that, that I, I property identity, sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. So if I subtract cosine from both sides, so sine squared equals one minus, sine squared equals one minus cosine squared. All right, I left the x's off because I'm just, you know, this is, this is what you're thinking in your head, okay? So I can make that substitution for that right there. So limit as x approaches zero, make the substitution sine squared x, x one plus cosine x. All right, now are we getting closer? I've got two sine x's and I do have an x down here in the bottom, all right? So can I pick one of those sine x's to put over the x? I still have the other sine x that can go over these two things and I can just multiply them because then I just have my rational function there. So the limit as x approaches zero, take one of them, sine x over x. Take the other one, sine x, because I've got two of them, over one plus cosine x. All right, and again, I could use my limit properties and separate these out and write them as two individual limits, okay? Which let's go ahead and do that. The limit as x approaches zero, you have sine x over x times the limit as x approaches zero, sine x over one plus cosine x. All right, this one we know it's one. This one over here, we don't have a property for it. So again, we're gonna do that direct substitution. We're gonna plug that zero in and see what happens. All right, so over here, I'm gonna take the limit here so I can do that. Over here, direct substitution, I'm taking the limit when I plug it in. So I'm gonna have sine of zero over one plus cosine zero. Let's see, sine of zero is, is zero on top here. So I've got one times zero on top. Cosine of zero is one, one plus one, but doesn't matter because zero divided by anything is zero. One times zero is zero. 